do it. So got a nice full audience here today and we're excited to talk about a new feature at Bbot, catering. Um, we're gonna just, let's dive right into it. So here's a little bit of the agenda for today. We're going to talk about the catering trends in a post COVID world. And we're gonna spend about, you know, half the, half the presentation on that. Then we're gonna jump into a software demo to show everyone the new, new catering features. And then we'll wrap up with some Q and A. But before we get into all of that, let's do a little bit of uh, background. Um, so I'm Steve, I'm the CEO and co-founder of Bbot. And we started Bbot in early 2018, um, actually in San Francisco before moving the, the primary headquarters to New York City. And a lot's happened since we started the company. And it's been very interesting to adapt and change with the restaurant industry. And I'm joined by my colleague, Zach. And Zach, why don't you give yourself a little, give a background for yourself and uh, introduce yourself. Sure. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm uh, Zach Drehoff. I'm a sales engineer here at Bbot. And uh, yeah, I'm a, a lifelong restaurant guy, front of house, back of house operations, and um, love the restaurant industry. And, and it's been really exciting to work here at Bbot. Uh, to help uh, grow uh, our customers' businesses in um, a post-COVID world. All right, let's dive right in. Next slide. So, Zach, why don't you why don't you tee it up for us here? I know you've got a lot of views on catering, and and I know I know you've uh, you helped put together this great deck. So why don't you start us off? Sure. So this is a, a quote from Carla Hall, who uh, many people might know from uh, Top Chef and The Chew. But before all that, um, she kind of made her bones as a, a caterer in D.C. And so this is a quote I found and I, I thought it very appropriate um, for kind of what's going on right now in the world and, and how restaurants and um, savvy operators are pivoting to uh, kind of meet the challenges. Now, what was the, not Top Chef, the other one? What show was that? Uh, the Chew. The Chew, I haven't seen that one. I haven't seen that one. Yeah. Is it a game? I haven't is, it like a, is it a competitive one? Yeah. I think it's a daytime talk show. Um, yeah. Let's check that out. I haven't out. seen that either, but I saw that on her bio. All right, well, we have to check that one out together. Next, <laughs> next slide. <laughs> um, okay, so to dovetail off what Zach just said, things are rapidly changing right now. And in catering, you're always changing. And, you know, in recent years, off-premise catering has been a huge revenue stream for restaurateurs, um, culminating in industry-wide sales of 64 billion in 2019. Now, there's been a little bit of a catering, like um, a sales dip since April um, of this year, but we expect, um, we expect catering to be a big source of revenue for the holidays here coming up. Um, and we've seen a lot of different variations on catering occur during COVID over the summer from meal delivery services to, you know, bulk alcohol sales from restaurants. We're going to get into that uh, during this presentation, but suffice to say, when we show you catering as a workflow engine in, in the Bbot software today, there's a lot of different ways you can leverage this other than just your traditional like Super Bowl Sunday style catering. Um, and so we're excited to show you how this is actually a general purpose tool that you can use for a lot of different uh, use cases in your business. Next slide. So let's, let's go, uh, let's kind of ping pong back and forth here, Zach, and, and go through these. So as I mentioned, we saw a lot of our customers start doing uh, meal prep kits for families and for groups uh, over the summer as a as a pivot from their core business model when they needed to. And this kind of um, prep kit, you know, something that you would see from a company like Blue Apron, but actually it became a pretty good revenue stream for a lot of restaurants in their communities who had a lot of these items already assembled in their kitchens and all they had to do is package it differently. Now it does, it does require a little bit of a different online ordering software tool. And so we're excited to show you some of those features today. What are some of these other examples, Zach? 
Sure. So uh, number two is box style meals to go, but I, I think, um, you know, just in general, man, many traditional caterers um, and, you know, restaurants that uh, based in, in venue dining started to pivot to more of a delivery and to go model. And so, you know, this is really an example of um, just finding ways to reach out to customers that maybe they couldn't invite inside. Yeah. And we also got DIY cocktail kits, always fun. Uh, delivery outposts. This one's uh, near and dear to my heart, especially in New York City, where we operate with a lot of customers. Um, being able to put, I don't know if you've seen the sweet green style outpost places, but um, restaurants are starting to generalize that idea instead of just doing salads to those. Um, in certain office buildings and office parks, we're seeing delivery outposts pop up um, and facilitating using software to facilitate delivery to those outposts where someone can then safely and contactlessly pick up the items is, has been a new trend we've seen. Um, again, kind of similar to the meal prep kits, but offering retail grocery items. So bulk items, if I'm already ordering delivery at night, you know, just for a, a regular meal, it's very convenient in my checkout flow to also, you know, throw in some eggs, gallon of milk, some extra essentials to, to augment the rest of the week when I'm, you know, working remotely from my apartment in New York. What else you got, Zach? Yeah. Well, I think, um, you know, when you mentioned delivery outpost to office buildings, I, I think one of the other um, hubs that we're seeing delivery outpost today is, is hospitals, right? That's a great spot to cater to uh, frontline workers. And, um, I think essential workers can be more than just those frontline yeah. workers. So good data about restaurants that are catering to uh, grocery stores and the employees there that are stocking shelves. Um, yeah. And we had a good story on this. One of our customers, a uh, neighborhood restaurant group over the summer, they, they actually were selling on, on the BBOT system, the, uh, you know, 500 to 250 meals in bulk as one menu item uh, on the platform. And, you know, you'd see it'd be amazing to see that people come in and just buy 250 meals for essential workers. Um, just shows that, you know, everyone kind of banding together to support essential personnel during this time. A hundred percent. Certainly. And then lastly, um, what's this last point here, Zach? Well, I think just, um, you know, again, I think this is a time where maybe business is slowed for many restaurants. So, uh, it's been an opportunity for operators to kind of take a step back and, and re-examine how they're doing business. And, you know, this is kind of the perfect time to begin um, developing new systems and investing and researching and developing technologies to help grow the business long term. All right. And I think BBOT is, uh, and our, <laughs> our new catering workflow is a, a perfect example of that. All right, next slide. So before we jump into the software demo in a bit, because I know that's what everyone's waiting for, um, just going to talk a little bit about the strategy around catering. So catering, different than uh, normal delivery orders, is they're typically larger. Um, there's some rules around that that we recommend around cart size, making sure that if they're going to put a large order or a catering order in, making sure it's large enough. Um, and then really what you're trying to do here is start with the, the most popular items. Um, the things that you know that people are craving from your spot, uh, that, cur that craveability drives the, the huge bulk sale. Um, and then it's key to also strike a balance because typically you're, you know, when someone's ordering catering, they wanna be able to get you know, the main and some sides that all kind of work well together. So. It's not about the number of items, but it's just about a good, a good menu that can fill the needs of the, the entire party. Sure. What else? And I, yeah, I think, you know, with that said, at least to start, make sure that you start with something that's small and manageable, right? You, you want to start with your top most popular items. Uh, you want to have a balance of those items, but we want to have a small, targeted, concise menu so that the team can execute and we can have a sample size to look at results and then build upon that as we go. 
what do you got? Not to put you on the spot here, Zach, but what do you have for think beyond salads for vegetarians and vegans? Sure. So I, I think, um, you know, <laughs> high protein sides, things like uh, beans and quinoa, um, pasta dishes, things that are hearty um, and rich in protein, but doesn't have to just be, you know, a lettuce bowl. <laughs> I was trying to stump you on your own slide. Um, yeah. Awesome. Well, key, another key thing, last thing here is obviously dietary restrictions are always important. You want a software tool that can clearly label the dietary restrictions. And then um, does it travel well? Does it package well? Always a key. You want the, you know, when they, when the guests open up their, the package, it hasn't made the food soggy. Um, the food is still relatively hot. And a lot of times uh, you should also think about the utility, the, um, the other things you bring besides the food when you're doing catering. Um, whether it's like a, the trays that, you know, with the little candles underneath to keep it warm, if it's, if it's like a barbecue, that kind of thing. So always thinking about the packaging and trying to be cost efficient with the packaging is very important as well. Sure. And I'd say one maybe bonus tip uh, that goes along with the packaging is, is don't forget to brand your business, right? This is especially if you're going to an office setting, the community where uh, folks are maybe encountering your food for the first time. Um, so, you know, if, if branding the bag and purchasing custom bags is out of the question, you know, get stickers and put stickers on there. Um, it's just a, a great opportunity to expand your outreach. It's a great idea. Great idea, Zach. All right. So now we're going to talk a little bit about, um, that was just some high level tips and tricks and just some things to think about when you're doing catering. Now we're going to move into more of the discussing a little bit of the software. So for those of you who are familiar with Bebot, um, catering is a new fulfillment type. If you're not familiar with Bebot, real quick, just a recap. In the Bebot system, uh, the online ordering system, we have different fulfillment methods, whether that's server delivery, which is a server walking, um, bringing over food and drink to a table, um, or driver delivery, which is like a driver delivering it to an apartment or a house. Catering is a new fulfillment type, um, just like those. And that comes with special rules that we've created. So with, with Bebot, if you have a catering fulfillment type set up in your system, we're able to create different order status progressions, as well as approval workflows that we're going to show you today that can allow your, um, your staff to easily manage these big orders coming in and make sure nothing is dropped or lost. So just a little bit of a high level of how it works, Zach, why don't you give them the overview? Yeah, so um, guests will have the opportunity to uh, order and pay um, a, a branded menu uh, that Bebot will build for you that can link to your website or we can send out through social media. Um, a guest will place their order uh, and that will fire off to uh, designated staff members of the restaurant. Maybe it's a catering manager, maybe it's the GM, uh, but that person or persons will have the ability to review, um, accept it or reject it. And that triggers a, a couple of different uh, custom messaging um, that gets sent back to the guest, you know, maybe, hey, your order was approved or, um, you know, we can't fulfill Unfortunately, someone from our team will reach out to you by phone. Um, yeah, either way, the guest will be notified of that and notified of the progress of the order. Uh, the staff will have notifications of that too, receiving um, that order um, either printed out or on a, a kitchen display screen uh, the morning of the order is due. And then, you know, hopefully at the end, guests receive food and are happy and uh, continue to. Uh, Continue Make another order. order. Catering Make yeah, another of order. course. So a couple of key things to point out here for those watching. In the approval section, this is really, this approval workflow is something that we worked really hard on at Bebot. So these custom fields that come in, I'm showing office, phone, name, email. It doesn't have to be, if you're not catering to offices, these are all customizable, which allows you to get the right data you need um, for your for fulfilling these orders. And then 
we're going to show you in the software how this approval workflow uh, really works today. And what's really nice is that during the time that your staff is managing this order and fulfilling this order, the guest is receiving constant communication. So if you're an office manager ordering catering, you don't need to worry that the catering order is not going to get to the special lunch on time because we've built a system that um, really helps that two-way digital communication between person ordering the catering and the team that's fulfilling the order. So we're really excited to show you that today. So as I mentioned, um, and what we're going to go through here before jumping into the demo is just some of the essential features that we see as very important when doing a digital catering experience. So one of them is a customized communication. Customized communication means not just that we trigger the text messages or the emails based on ordering or getting refunded or rejected on your catering order, but also that you can tailor them to you know, your brand and how you wanna communicate with guests. So anything from, so customizing the text message, instead of just saying a generic, thanks you so much for placing your order, the restaurant will review. You can actually customize this to throw in your restaurant name, add in a funny joke, be more creative than me. Not just customizing the communication, but also having the operator workflow um, be very efficient and exact is very important. So we've set it up where designated team members are notified of these large catering orders via customized email. Uh, and then this sets you up for a, the email will actually have in there an approval link where you can click in and it'll take you to a screen that lets you review the catering order and then approve it or reject it. Um, maybe it's the order's not big enough, or maybe it's too large, or maybe we're at, we're at, it's on a too short of a time frame. There's an, any number of reasons. We've gotten a lot of feedback from operators um, that this approval rejection workflow is gonna really meet their needs um, and make sure that they're always handling their logistics properly. And last feature we think is very essential is the configurable menu system that you've come to know and love from the BBOT experience. So we want to be able to easily add and edit catering menus to sell bulk items and include as many modifiers as necessary to make the guest facing menu quick and simple for ordering. And then lastly, the timers are very important. So setting menu timers uh, and having rules for different, um, different menus is super important, especially if you wanna do special catering menus around the holidays, but only wanna have certain windows for when those items are orderable and when they're fulfillable. And so this uh, feature set allows you to kind of craft and create the experience of changing your catering program from time to time. All right, let's jump into a demo here. Perfect, all right, why don't you take them through a little bit here. So this is so what we're what we're going to start with is the guest facing view, and then we're going to show the operational back of the house view. Sure. So um, this is a, a branded web page for Choice Catering. Um, you know, a link to this site could reside on you know Choice's uh, website, or they could send it out through social media. Uh, the guest would select this and um, come to this catering menu. Uh, we've set it up currently with a, a couple of different rules, one being that there is an order minimum that the guest uh, must select. So I'm going to add just this club sandwich box quickly. And it's not going to let me proceed until I hit that minimum. So I am going to have to go back and add a couple of things. Let's get the pinwheel tray. Do the nice. pinwheel tray. Maybe we'll do a couple salads. And let's just do some drinks to make sure that we get to our $80 minimum. It's a lot awesome. of lemonade. Well, <laughs> We like lemonade thirsty, here. Thirsty, thirsty. Yep. 
All right, what's the day and time set up? Yeah, so uh, we've got this configured so that uh, the guests can place future orders and that there needs to be a minimum of at least one day of lead time. So this is all uh, configurable on the back end. Um, certainly a restaurant could accept same day orders if they wish. Um, and we can extend that maximum out as well. Currently, I've just got it to a week at a time, but I need this for Friday and I'm gonna set it for a two to three pickup. Awesome, so the order is in now. The order is in. And so let's take me through the, the statuses of, um, well, actually, how about you flip the screen over to me? I'm going to show them the, the owner, the owner panel. Sure. Yes, I can. So behind this, so that was just the quick, everyone who's watching, that was the quick guest experience. Very simple, straightforward. Let's talk about operationally how you make that all happen. So this would be um, the back of the house tool you can use to modify your menus. And this is where we can, you know, make that brownie tray pop, add a nice description, put it as a most loved item at the top if we wanted to. And all the stuff you come to know and love from the Bebop configurability set. Actually, one thing I noticed here is we want to put this on the catering terminal um, to follow the catering rules, and I'll explain what that is. So this is for those who are more well-versed with the BBOT system, this is where the, the station that fulfills this brownie tray. So right now we have it going to a, the main BBOT terminal in the restaurant, but if we wanted to have it just go to a catering terminal that only your catering manager looks at, we offer that level of configurability for you, um, which is a very nice feature when you're trying to split out normal orders coming in from larger catering orders. So let's talk a little bit about that, the menu timer. So we had it, Zach, you had it set up where I couldn't order catering on the same day. Now, a lot of restaurants do that because they don't want someone ordering 1 p.m. catering at 12. And so the way that we have that set up in Bebot is we do this through having menus and menu timer rules. So in this case, we have the menu accepts orders in the future. And then we have it set up that the allowed ordering windows are anytime. So you can order anytime, but the delivery and pickup times are only between 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. And this is, in, in this particular example, this is when our catering operation is doing deliveries. And then as far as allowing same day delivery, we have it set up here where we are not allowing same day delivery by having this box unchecked. And another, a couple other really important features for catering, since these are larger orders, is how far in the future guests can schedule that pickup and delivery and the number of days guests must order ahead by. And then lastly, what are the time blocks? We're delivering in um, every hour, we have hour time blocks. And this allows us to set up uh, order throttling rules where we might only accept two catering orders per hour. And this level of configurability is something we think is very important for running a really highly tuned catering operation and making sure that your staff can handle the orders that are coming in and not get overwhelmed. So this is the, these are the rules we have set up um, on our configurability here. Now let's kick it over to the alerting section and talk about the different alerts we could set up. Zach, I can click through while you, you chat about it. Sure, so uh, we can configure um, email alerts to uh, automatically be sent out to anyone on the staff that we designate should uh, receive and approve or reject these uh, catering orders right now. Steve is going to add himself as uh, the catering manager, and he's going to indicate first how he'd like to be notified. Um, Let's go by email here. Let's do email. 
I'll share my email to everyone watching. You know, feel free to email me with how sweet you think this webinar is. And let's do some custom alert settings. So I'm gonna pick, Zach, I'm gonna go ahead and pick anytime a catering order comes to the catering station. And since, you know, in this case, let's pretend that I'm your manager and you're the, you're working on site as the catering fulfiller. So I'll say okay. any, an order is left unopened for five hours. I'm gonna, if we haven't touched the order, the catering order coming in for five hours, I'm gonna set up an alert for myself. And I'm gonna just submit that. And then why don't we set up one for you for one hour so that you can get a text alert because uh, maybe you're you're working on other stuff for the day. I mean, you're a busy manager on site. You don't have time to monitor the catering screen at all times. So let's go ahead and set up an alert for you. Or actually, we can just add it to your existing alerts here. We can throw in a new alert. Let's throw in an alert for a text or um, an email that the orders left unopened. For one hour. All right. There we go. We could have done a text alert if we throw your phone number in, but we'll just we'll do it for email for the purpose of this demo. So now what we've set up here is a going back to the slides I was uh, mentioning to everyone. Catering is all about you know really efficient, streamlined workflows for your staff and for the guests. And so what we've just set up here is. Uh, a system where we kind of have a backstop now. So Zach will, let's say Zach's busy working on an inventory management project that I had assigned him and he didn't see the catering order come in and, and the staff is, you know, the short staff that day. So Zach will get an alert. We can do a text or an email after one hours of not opening the catering order. And then let's say Zach misses that for whatever reason, even though Zach's a great employee, he would never miss that. Let's just say he did. I have it now set up where after five hours, I get the alert and can give Zach a call and just make sure that we're taking care of this order and running it through the approval or rejection workflow. So let me, let me go ahead and show you that part of it now. Let me just pull up a sample email. Anything to add, Zach, while I pull that up? Yeah, I just, I think it's, um really great the level of configurability that we offer here right so certainly the the different timers ahead of time on when guests can place orders how far in advance how much notice does the staff need and then on the back end with these alerts as well i mean you can see how we can uh, trigger these emails to auto automatically be sent with different conditions and, and different times so Really, there's lots of flexibility here, depending on um, you know how you want to set up your catering operation and and how you want your staff to follow these workflows. Absolutely, and then when Zach um, approves the or so like when the orders come in, uh, let's just show you this here. Pop one open. So when the orders come in. Zach can approve those. And as the guest, I can get triggered an email very simply that your catering order has been approved. And then all the details of the catering order will be right there in my inbox for me as the guest who ordered. And then let me just show you a rejected one, just in case we had to reject uh, an order. Um, we can trigger a custom message with custom uh, alerts up here and the reason for rejection. Um, in this case, it shows also that it's all been refunded. So the catering manager has full control to re um, reject or accept these orders. And we make it really easy to do that all digitally. But at the end of the day, you might also wanna just pick up the phone and call the guest if you've collected their phone number to let them know uh, as, a, as a measure of hospitality. Um, that could also be a, something we see a lot of our customers do, even though we have managed it all digitally. Um, we also have the ability to, you know, collect their phone number so you can call them. 
Um, okay. And Zach, I don't know if you have it set up if you wanted to show the uh, your order on the KDS screen. Um, sure, give me one second. No worries. And while we're setting that up, I will go ahead and for the Bebot pros out there, I just wanna show one more thing on this. Um, so as we mentioned, catering is a fulfillment method. And again, if you're not a Bebot expert, we're happy to uh, train you on this particular screen. So remember, this is our location. For those who know this, this is our location editor screen where you can add as many different locations as you want. And these are either unique URLs or QR codes that tie to a fulfillment method. So in this case, we have our catering fulfillment set up and we have that the catering, I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna edit this and I'm gonna remove the main Bbot terminal and have all catering fulfillment methods go to our catering screen. And I'm gonna make sure that we have, that we're gonna collect, um, I wanna collect phone number. I wanna make sure we collect phone number. Let me add that in here. And let's collect a marketing opt-in. So I'd like to receive special catering offers as a update here. So we're gonna collect email, phone, and a marketing opt-in. And we don't need to show the, let's show the email and the phone on the KDS, on the, on the catering screen. But let's not show the marketing opt-in on the KDS. Let's just show that um, nowhere, and except for in our reporting. So now we can actually collect unique data on our guests. And if they agree to receive special offers, we can send them future catering offers um, through our marketing automation platform of choice, whether maybe you're using MailChimp or another tool like that. We can help get you set up where you can send out you know, special offers and keep them coming back for more. All right, so let me save this. So now we've got our, got our full catering uh, fulfillment method set up. We've got our stations receiving catering orders and we've got our approval and rejection workflow for me and Zach. So we've really taken you end to end through the entire catering workflow. The one thing we didn't show you was the order actually showing up in the restaurant. And Zach, putting you on the spot, are you ready for that? Um, well, we would need to uh, approve that future order that just came through. This is how the, the orders come in. And this is what we would take you through and easily, this is where you manage them um, for, for uh, having your staff fulfill them actually. So this is the last, the last piece is the KDS screen inside. I just wanted to close the loop and show everyone that. The other piece is just in the rejection exception email. So I'm gonna show that. And then this is where you would see, you can see my screen. This is how the approval of the manager happens. So new catering request, and then for the restaurant that we're looking at. And then this has the patron's name and everything about the patron. So a catering order has been placed. Please find the details of the order outline below. In this case, I ordered one. It's not really a catering order since I only ordered one uh, mini yogurt. But this is the link that the catering manager gets now to auto respond in that terminal I just showed you so that they're able to uh, accept or reject this and then the staff will go ahead and make. So this is the, the email with the link. So I can be, you know, I could be working on something else and on the go, but I still get this um, ability to my mobile device if I'm checking my email on my phone to check out the catering order and then respond if we want to advance it or refund it um, and let the, that'll trigger that automatic communication to the guest. All right, so let's kick it back to the, the deck, Zach, um, and let's wrap it up. Yeah, so uh, just to close the loop, I think, um, you know, Steve, you mentioned it. We, we really think that this is, um, prime time for uh, catering to begin to rebound. Um, certainly you mentioned the holidays are coming up and, and that is a, a, a 
probably the the, the most uh, busy time for B two C catering. But you know, I think there's opportunity within B two C and B two B. Certainly, office spaces are reopening, and um, you know, the, this is really the segment that sees uh, consistent orders nonstop. I think 41 percent of businesses order catering on a weekly cadence, um, you know, almost three fourths do that on a monthly cadence with an average order of almost $300. Um, and then with B2C, we mentioned holidays, but we're also seeing an increase in, in backyard weddings where, um, you know, there is no preferred vendor list and, um, you know, certainly guests have the opportunity to order catering from their favorite restaurant, um, you know, with on-premise occupancy limits, we're seeing folks getting together for sporting events, for football, um, and you know they they want to 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 treat their friends and family to a, a catered meal, um, and we're seeing average order anywhere from ten to twenty dollars a person. And um, you know this last kind of graph here talks about just what consumers are looking for when they're ordering catering, um, and and. While certainly Bebot, we really can't help you with the quality or taste of of, of the food. Uh, we, we can really help with all other four items and um, kind of give you that peace of mind so that you can just focus on the food. Um, while we take care of you know order accuracy, ease of ordering, uh, making sure that the order can be delivered uh, through some of our partnerships with like DoorDash Drive. Um, so yeah, I think the the opportunity is now. And yeah, Steve, what else do you think? Well, I, well, I want to jump right. In. We got a lot of great questions, so I want to jump right into them actually. Um, and please ask any other questions that you want while you're listening. But when someone asks, can the rules be created for orders to be auto approved? And the answer is yes. Uh, we built the approval workflow, but you could also streamline it where you can have this set up to be uh, auto approved. And then the next question we had is, when orders are throttled, will it remove those timeframes for the guests moving forward? And the answer on that is yes as well. So we have order throttling setup and capabilities in the settings section of the BBOT admin portal. I didn't actually show those today, but basically what you do is you set the timeframes in BBOT and then you set your order throttling rules on how many orders per each time zone, time block. And those will be, um, not usable for guests if they've already been taken. Um, let me just check out what else we've got. A uh, question from Fern here. I didn't see a location for a physical address on the order. Is that something we can require? Absolutely. Uh, physical address is super important. If you're, I was, I was demoing um, an office delivery use case for restaurants on site at the office. Um, but in that, in that case, like the, the catering um, runners know where the office buildings are and which which um, restaurant, sorry, which business on which floor they are. So they didn't need an address there. But in the general case of delivering to a house or an apartment, we can absolutely require physical address as part of the ordering workflow for the guests. Um, let's see what other questions we have rolling in here. Um, does does this integrate with uh, my point of sale? Well, the answer that's a tough answer. Uh, the answer is it likely will, but we'd have to you have to check with one of our solutions consultants um, for the point of sales that we integrate with and the roadmap for integration. Uh, so let us know. We do have a lot of out of the box integrations though, and always adding more. What else? Any other questions? Figured Gilles would be uh, from our team would throw one in. I think he might have. Oh no, there he is. Our engineer who built a lot of this. Uh, he's joined and listened in on the webinar today. So surprised he hasn't given me a funny question. Oh, here we go. Oh, he just says hi. <laughs> I thought it was a question. Um, cool. All right. Well, we're going to hang around for another minute or two. And anyone who has any other questions, just jump in, throw it in the chat. Uh, Zach and I will be here and we'll, we'll answer it. But other than that, we really appreciate everyone joining us on a Monday morning. Um, we have a food hall 
question about catering and you know bbot has built a very unique set of tools for food halls with different vendors and we actually do have a way to accomplish samantha what i think you're looking for you should definitely reach out to sales at bbot.menu for a little bit of a more personalized food hall demo but as a quick example of how we this is kind of like a mega food hall uh, you can check out Hudson Yards menu, which is an example of like a lot of different restaurants kind of coming together to do like combined ordering where we've only have three of the vendors there doing catering um, on the platform now, but they're, they're adding more each week as they reop as they open back up for COVID. But we do have like a unique solution to do multi vendor grouping. Um, and so we're happy to give you a more personalized demo if you reach out to sales at bbot.menu. Nice. Oh, got another question. S support Toast integration. Yes, we have an out of the box direct integration with Toast. Um, we're able to sync over any Toast menu and then inject orders into Toast to keep your reporting clean. Um, so that menu sync and the order injection are really the two touch points there. All right. Well, we appreciate everyone's time today. Again, we'll follow up with the rec our marketing team. We'll send out the recording. And thanks for joining us and learning about Bebop Catering.